My name is Tanya Fincham, along with Alex Bishop. Cool. We're, we're in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Yes. To speak with Christine Phillips. Mm -hmm. And this is part of our Oklahoma 100 Your Life Project. So thank you for letting us come today. <laughs> Let's start with having you tell us when and where you were born. I was born out there on the farm between Dover and Loyal. Okay. And when? October the 7th, 1999. 1999. In, in the evening. In the, <laughs> did you have brothers and sisters? One brother. He's passed away several years ago. Older or younger? Older. Older. Mm -hmm. And what did your parents do for a living? Farming. They farmed. And what did they farm? Well, they raised wheat, corn, alfalfa, milo maize. They had a little bit of everything. <laughs> and where had they come from? Well, my mother was from Nebraska, and she was born here in Oklahoma, in the United States. But my dad came from Hamburg, Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how did they end up in Oklahoma? Well, they... My my dad lost his mother a long time when he was a little kid, and his aunt took him by the hand and said, well, you better go to the United States. There's nothing here. She gave him some money to go on to come over here. And my mother was born in Nebraska, and they both moved out here on the farm, and some way they got acquainted. <laughs> They didn't move here together then? Oh, no. No, uh, no. Uh, no. it's a different family. <laughs> uh, what did your mother do? Well, she was a farmer or did she do something outside of the farm? She farmed. She helped with the farm. And she sowed a lot. We had a big garden, raised a lot of chickens. <laughs> and did you have to kill any of those chickens? Oh, yes. <laughs> you did or your mother did? You did? We both did. Both did. Mm -hmm. did you have a technique? Well, yes, just take them by the, <laughs> by the feet and use an axe and chop their head off. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you did in those days, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you, and your dad, where would he take his produce to market? Where would he? Yeah, he used to go to Dover, Oklahoma and Dover. take the eggs and the cream and the butter to the store and bought a few groceries. Was Dover pretty big at that time? They what? Was Dover pretty big at that time? Well, they had two grocery stores. Yeah, well, pretty big. And, um, uh, see, I think I had a drugstore and a restaurant. Yeah, they were, and two filling stations. And they were pretty big, pretty good side of town. Well, how would he get there? With a horse and wagon. Okay. <laughs> Two horses and a wagon. Okay. Did you have chores? Oh yes, I had to take care of the chickens and other things. I always cooked and helped my mother cook and worked in the garden. So you did more girl stuff and your brother did more boy Farming, stuff? Farming, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to school? Excelsior. Between Dover and Loyal is a little school, a one-room schoolhouse between Dover and Loyal. How many grades was there? <laughs> From the first to the eighth grade. All in one, one year we had 36 kids in that one-room school. They were just piled up in there. <laughs> How many were in your grade? There was uh, seven of us girls. We were all girls. We didn't have a boy in our grade. Huh. <laughs> what was your favorite subject? Arithmetic. Algebra, they call it now. <laughs> what would you take for your lunch? Oh, a sandwich. Usually bread and butter sandwich, bread and jelly. Bread and jelly and butter sandwich, maybe a cookie or a piece of pie mm. or an apple. <laughs> Your mother was a good cook? Yes. Was mm -hmm. she? Mm -hmm. What else do you remember about her, about your yeah. mother? Well, she worked real hard. She worked out in the field with the man, shucked wheat and shucked corn and raked the hay when they cut them hay. 
and then she'd go out there and rake it, and they'd come along and bale it, and she worked real hard. And what do you remember about your dad? Well, he worked hard, too, out on the farm. <laughs> Did he have a job other than the farm? No, uh -uh. he just farmed. So when you finished the eighth grade, what did you do? I stayed home and helped my parents on the farm. Did you? <laughs> I didn't go to high school. <laughs> did you get married? Yes, got married. Then we moved northeast to Dover and farmed there a while. Then after that, in 19, my daughter was born in 1946. And uh, we bought the place southwest to Hennessy then and moved there. And we had a small dairy of about 20 cows. Mm. We sold milk to go spot dairy and Enid. <laughs> so did you have to help milk? Oh, I milked a lot of cows, yes. But we had an electric milkers. We had that you hook onto, and we had a great big tank that the milk went into the cool. <laughs> and how long did you do that the, with the dairy? Oh, from 1946 to about 1964, I think. And my husband had heart problems, so we had to sell the cows and the farm and move here to Kingfisher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was quite a move, too, I bet. Yes, mm -hmm. we had to sell the cows. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lot of homemade ice cream? No, we didn't do that. We bought it. <laughs> <laughs> we even bought the milk. We didn't use it. <laughs> you, did, you didn't use your own milk? No. I don't know why, but we always bought ghost spot milk. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't make your own ice cream? What about cottage cheese? Oh, we used to make that a long time ago, but we didn't when we had the dairy. We didn't make, uh, make cottage cheese, but I did. At home, we always made cottage cheese. <laughs> well, how old were you when you got married? 36. You were 36. So you lived at home a while then. Yes. <laughs> now, at home, when you were a child growing up, did you speak another language? or? Oh, yes. And your father was German your... and English both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you know any German today? Yes. I forgot a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go to church? Was it in both, both languages? When you well, when we lived there by Southwest of Hennessy, we went to a little Harmony Church, which they got out here in the museum. They moved that church out here. Mm -hmm. So we went there a lot. Um, and Sunday afternoons, we'd have a big picnic. Everybody bring a dish. We had good times. <laughs> Was the sermon in German or oh, English? No, uh, English? No, uh, uh. no. Nobody spoke German then. You know, during World War One, you didn't dare speak <laughs> German. Mm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and Dover's close to the little town of Loyal. Yes. But it was called something else, though, wasn't it? Kiel. Kia, see that was a German name. So during World War we changed it to Loyal. <laughs> yeah, it's all German people out there around Loyal. <laughs> well, did you learn to cook some German dishes? No, not really. Oh. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, in the house that you grew up, how was it heated? With a coal stove, oh. a wood stove, either one. Sometimes we burn coal, sometimes wood. Would it keep you warm in the winter? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we just heated two rooms. The bedrooms were icy cold. <laughs> well, how did you stay warm in there? Oh, well, we had a lot of quilts. Quilts. Your mother made quilts? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And they had a feather bed. Oh. They were warm. You have to beat them to shift them around, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and was the bathroom inside or outside? The bathroom? Yeah, outside. Well, outside. you didn't have nothing inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, was that bathroom a one-seater or a two-seater? Bathroom. 
There wasn't no heat. Well, the outhouse, right? There wasn't nothing, no. Mm -mm. There wasn't no heater in there. <laughs> but, but, but did you have an outhouse? Yes. Uh -huh. Was that a one-seater or a two-seater? Two-seater. <laughs> <laughs> we never have quite figured that out, if that no. people actually used it at the same time or not. <laughs> How would your mother do laundry? On a board, washboard. <laughs> Back in the hard days, yeah. weren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, how was the, the depression on, on the farm for you guys? Oh, it didn't bother us too much because we always had plenty of canned fruit and vegetables and always had a granary full of oats and wheat and barley. But you didn't dare, World War I, you didn't dare feed chick, uh, wheat to the chickens. Mm. They all went into flour. And when you bought flour, we always bought the big 48-pound sacks of flour and sugar in 48-pound sacks. <laughs> I can't imagine and, you could move those. And uh, well, I still got some of those sacks left. And my mother, if you bought flour, you had to buy potato flour with it and hominy. And nobody liked hominy. And my mother then mixed the potato flour in with the other flour and baked bread. And we couldn't hardly tell it, but you had to use it somehow. You allowed only so much flour. Oh, during, and, during rationing. Yes, everything was rationed. Sugar and flour and coffee. Mm. Was Shoes. That, was that Shoe. during World War One? Yes. Mm. Shoes, you had to pair, wear one pair of shoes for a year. <laughs> mm. They put soles on them. My dad got a pretty good guy and putting soles on. You know, the soles would wear out, and he could put different soles on them. <laughs> and we only had one pair of shoes a year. <laughs> and your brother, too. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever have any family members who fought in World War One? No, I haven't. My husband was ready to go. <clears throat> they met him here at the Kingfisher Courthouse. Hmm? Is it okay? Yeah, you're fine. World War One or no World War Two? Yeah, World War One. They have all met here at the Kingfisher Courthouse. They was ready to be shipped out, and the war was over. Oh, the whistle blew and everything was going on. And said, "Well, the war's over. You don't have to go." They give them a dollar and told them to go back home. <laughs> what year was that? Uh, gee, I must have been about. Where was it? I don't, really don't know what year that was. That was 1920, in the 20s, 19 in the 20s somewhere. 24 mm -hmm. maybe, I don't know just really what, when that was. That's fine, that's fine. But, uh, So your brother was too young to go? Yes. Uh -huh. Did anyone in your family have the flu, the, in, the major flu back in the... 1918, 1919. No, no, there's a lot of people died out there from it. It was bad. Yeah, we went through some tough times sometimes, but we made it. It's interesting that you remember World War I being, oh, being yeah. over. You would have been I was 10, about 11. nine years old, I think. Hey, all I remember all about that. That was bad. That's the worst war. It was a bad. Oh, it didn't have anything. Everything was rationed. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you didn't dare feed ch uh, wheat to the chickens. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have rubber for tires. It was too no. early for that, too, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember some of them used their old tires and put on over the other tires that they had on, they used the old tires that they had thrown away and wired them on <laughs> so the other tires would last longer. Mm -hmm. It was a mess. <laughs> well, you talk about it around the dinner table? 
Would your parents talk about it around the dinner oh, table yes. too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we always had plenty to eat. Some people suffered. They didn't have hardly anything. And winters were pretty bad? Oh, yes. We had some hard winters. Mm -hmm. A lot of snow. I remember during World War I, so many people died from the flu, especially out there, too. And my parents lived about a mile and a half west of the cemetery out there. And every few days they come along, well, you have to dig another grave. And the ground was froze hard as a rock. They had to pick it all the way down by a shovel, spade and shovel in the pick. The ground was froze so hard. They took them all day to dig a grave. <laughs> and that, that was hard times. That was around Dover? Yes, was west it? of Dover. West of mm -hmm. Did they spend their entire life on that farm? Your, yes. par your parents? Mm -hmm. That sits still in the family? Yes, we st I still own it. Cool. I made it over to my daughter so she'll get it. <laughs> my mother always said, don't never sell that place. <laughs> and you do what your mother says, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, how, how did you meet your husband? Well, we was <laughs> lived about a mile and a half apart out there. <laughs> he came to see me one day and we started dating and got married. <laughs> Did you go on a honeymoon? No, no. We didn't have money to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> and how many children did you have? Just one daughter, one daughter? Shirley. <laughs> what was the what about <clears throat> what about the dust bowl? Do you have any memories of the Dust Bowl? Oh, yes, that was bad. One of my neighbors, he was out in the field working with horses out there, and he couldn't find his way home. So he just turned the horses loose. They knew where to go. She got so dark, you didn't know where he was at. He just, the horses just followed the fence row and came on home to the barn. He said, you couldn't see anything when that hit. That was awful. Mm -hmm. It's like a big old black cloud came in. And you just, you just, you wiped the table off in about five minutes. It was just covered with dirt again. <laughs> Made cooking and having dinner a little hard, didn't it? Oh yes, we learned to turn all the cups of the plates upside down. <laughs> I guess I should say, what did you call dinner? Was it supper, dinner, lunch, back it in those was, days? Yeah, it was breakfast, dinner, and supper. Dinner now and they supper. call it lunch and dinner at, at noon, at, in the evening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, would you travel into Kingfisher very much? No, we didn't. When we did, they drove the wagon and the horses to Dover and caught a train to Kingfisher. That was faster. Cool. <laughs> How about Oklahoma City? Would you no, ever go we that never far? got there, no. That was too far away. <laughs> never thought about Oklahoma City. <laughs> so if you're, you sold your dairy, the milk from your dairy to Enid, Mm -hmm. When they come pick it up? They came, big old truck came and picked it up and hauled it in. And every farmer out in there where we lived had a dairy. He just went around and picked up everybody's milk and took it to eat it. <laughs> Was that before regulations came in and changed things? Mm, no. It was pretty strict then. The well, barn had to be clean. Had inspectors? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Inspector would come around and inspected it every so often. <laughs> did you have a did you have a name? Did your dairy have a No, uh -uh. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I went through a lot of hard times. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a tell us a few of them. <laughs> Just a few. No. <laughs> Just a few. I don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember one year my husband had heart problems pretty bad. He was down here in Kingfisher Hospital. And I had 20 cows to milk, and my daughter worked here at the bank, and we had a big ice storm. Oh, everything was covered with ice. I told her, I said, don't take the pavement, take the dirt road. It won't be quite as slick, maybe. Then she turned off west of Dover and hit that little bridge west of Dover, and down she went, car and all, went down the creek. Oh, man. I I just got all the cows milked and cleaned up and took care of the chickens. I was just went in the house to fix me a bite to eat and I saw the sheriff car coming up the high, up the road. And I said, oh, I knew, I knew she had a wreck then right away when I saw the sheriff car coming up the driveway. And he came and got us and took us back to Kingfisher. And my mother lived here in Kingfisher then. And we stayed with her till night, then we had to go home and milk the cows. And, and my husband was here in the hospital, and I went to see him. He said right away, he could tell something was wrong. He said right away, what's wrong? <laughs> he could, I wasn't going to tell him. And I had to tell him, and it didn't bother him too much. But, yeah. <laughs> He knew you too well. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, with dairy cows, there's no vacation from what, oh, no. I, from what I understand. Can't, can't go off and leave them. Yeah. <laughs> when 20 cows was enough to make a living with? Oh, yes, we got much? by. <laughs> we didn't make much money, no. We had got by. <laughs> they don't make much like they do now. No. Of course, it cost three, four times more than it did then. That's true. <laughs> well, did you learn to sew too? Did you sew? No, I never did so much. I rather worked outside. <laughs> I rather cooked. <laughs> what was your favorite thing to make? Oh, I like to make those big old meringue lemon pies and coconut pies. Desserts, <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't mind any of it. <laughs> Would you take things to the county fair? No, I never did. But did the county agent come to the, your, to the farm much? No, no. Uh -uh. no, I never did. Did you belong to a homemaker club? No. no. Um, too busy. Yeah. <laughs> what were holidays like as a child growing up? Well, we never celebrated them much then. You know, for Thanksgiving we usually had a goose. We had ducks and geese and chickens. We never did raise any turkeys. I know my mother always said, well, you want a chicken or a Duck or goose? Everybody said a goose. They all like goose. We always roasted a goose for Thanksgiving. And Christmas, we got one toy. <laughs> now the kids have a whole room full of toys. <laughs> what would you usually get? Oh, I don't know. I didn't really get very many dolls. I got toy guns. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> had those little toy guns about that long, little bullets in them, about the size of my little finger, made out of wood. Well, I got pretty good in hitting the target. Because <laughs> I had a brother, I guess, that's why. I always went hunting with him, and I liked guns. Oh, I got a doll once in a while, a doll buggy, something like that. But one thing is all we got for Christmas. We got an apple or an orange or some candy. We thought that was great. <laughs> well, what would you go hunting for, you and your brother? 
Oh, ducks, hunting ducks, uh, shoot the ducks, and we cooked them. We were good. Mm -hmm. And I went trapping with the guys, too. My brother and his friend, they always went down the creek. We live right close to the creek. And they always trapped for coons and uh, possums and skunks, mink, and all that stuff. And I always tag along with them. <laughs> What about rattlesnakes? We didn't have none of them. <laughs> Good thing. <laughs> Sk skunk. We had snakes, but no rattlesnakes. What would they do with a skunk? Uh, skin them and sell the fur. Not the, not the smell? <laughs> yeah, the boys all trapped out there. They all trapped skunks. And the schoolhouse all smelled like skunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had to stretch those furs. You had to have a certain board, you know, to stretch them on. My brother always had the whole side of the garage hanging full of furs that he stretched on the board, and like skunk, and mink, and civet cats, and possums, and all that. Where would he sell them? Well, a truck came around ever so often and picked up all the boys' furs. <laughs> What's a silver cat? It's a little smaller than a skunk. Looks a lot like a skunk, but they're a little bit smaller. <laughs> do they have a stink? Do they stink like a skunk? Oh yes, do they? Oh yes. Hmm. They're similar to a skunk, only they're smaller. <laughs> we learned something today, Alex. Well. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people haven't heard of a civet cat. <laughs> Well, would, would other salesmen come come by the place, by your parents? No. Like the Raleigh one. man or whatever? Oh, yes. Once in a while they did with the Raleigh products. Everybody bought liniment and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> spices. Sometimes spices. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every so often they come around. <laughs> Do you remember the first car? Oh, yes. My father leased the place out there for oil, got $800 and bought a brand new Buick for $800. <laughs> Living in high cotton then. Yeah, you wouldn't buy much of a car now, would you, for $800? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a tire or two. <laughs> yeah. So he was smart and kept mineral rights to the property? Yeah, oh yes, yeah. uh-huh, yes. <laughs> yeah. We had a neighbor who had his first car, old Model T Ford. And everybody, if they needed to go to Kingfisher, they'd get him to home to Kingfisher. <laughs> they paid him so much to come down here. It's a lot faster than driving a wagon and team down here. <laughs> Well, did doctors make house calls back then? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The horse and buggy. <laughs> That's a long time. And they didn't charge nothing, hardly. Mm -hmm. They always say, oh, don't pay. Don't worry about paying. When the harvest comes around, you can pay us. <laughs> what, what would you pay them what, during harvest? About a dollar. <laughs> yeah, not much. Did you ever trade any Five goods? Dollars. Huh? Ever trade any goods for for their time? Well, sometimes it took an old hen or some two or three chickens, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, the grocery stores in Dover, the half of the farmers charged the groceries till harvest time, then they paid them. <laughs> My dad always paid everything right, cash right away. He didn't want to owe anybody. And he paid, I know uh, Clyde Sherwood, he always said, well, don't worry about paying us. When harvest comes, you can pay us. But he always went, went ahead and paid. He didn't want to owe anybody. Who <laughs> was Clyde Sherwood? Huh? It was Clyde Sherwood. It's a grocery man in Dover. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did your dad trust the banks 
Or did he keep his money <laughs> hidden at home? No, he lost $500 at the Loyal Bank. Loyal had the bank then. And no, $500 was a lot of money at those times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was gone. Bank went busted. <laughs> so he kept it at home from then on? No. <laughs> No, he never did do any business with that bank anymore. <laughs> Keep it under the bed? No, he dealt with Kingfisher Bank then. Switched mm -hmm. to switch banks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done business with that bank all the time. We've done business with that bank here in Kingfisher for a long time. <laughs> What did you used to do for entertainment? As a, did you go to carnivals, a circus? <laughs> was music involved or? No, we never went anywhere. Once in a while, they had a <coughs> kind of a carnival come through town, out Loyal or Dover, and we went to that, but not very often. We didn't have no entertainment to entertain ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's always so tired. My land, he worked so hard all day. When night comes, we were tired. We <laughs> didn't think about going anywhere and doing anything. <laughs> well, how often would you get to take a bath when you were little? <laughs> Once a week, usually. No, Saturday night bath, they called it. <laughs> And you have to share it with your brother, or do you get to go first? No, I always get to go serve first. Did you? And yeah, that's the way all the kids done it. All went to school. They all had a once a week bath. <laughs> well, you had to bring the water in and heat it on the stove, <laughs> get through with it, and throw it back out. <laughs> So by Friday, it wasn't smelling too good at school? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, we all smelled alike. <laughs> and what about church? How important was church back in the Well, days? we never did go then. My mother went quite a bit to the Catholic church at Loya, but my dad and I, we never went. We stayed home, worked. <laughs> And as you got older, did you go, yes. go to church? Yes. Uh -huh. We got married and they moved over southwest to Hennessy. There was a little country church. We always went to that. Your mother wouldn't make you go with her? She let you stay with your dad? No. Mm -mm. <laughs> Were you a daddy's girl? Yeah. Were you? <laughs> Did you have music much in the home? We had an old talking machine we called it then, old Edison phonograph. Mm -hmm. Had to crank? Mm hmm yeah. Had those round, little old round, <laughs> whatever you call them, tube things you stuck in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what you call them, but I know yeah. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We had a neighbor that got the first one, then it seemed like everybody got one. And they all traded records with one another. We didn't do like they do now. My, my brother and his friend, they'd always trade records back and forth. <laughs> do you have a radio? Later? A little no. later? No radio? Oh, later on, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, do you remember getting electricity on the Oh, the yes. Mm -hmm. That was something. <laughs> what was the first thing your mother did? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Not get an electric washing machine? No, she had one with the motor on. We used that quite a while. Well, the refrigerator was the next thing to get a refrigerator. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> you have an ice plant in Dover? Was there an ice plant in Dover? Uh, I don't think there was. There's one here, but I don't think there was one in Dover. 
So how would you keep things cool? <laughs> you didn't, huh? It didn't keep that cool. You just ate it all up and didn't have nothing left. You couldn't save stuff like you do now. You just fixed it so everybody <coughs> ate it up. And, you know, it was gone. Hmm. You couldn't keep nothing. Not even butter? Butter, we went and put it down the cellar. It kept real good down the cellar. Okay. But we couldn't put everything down there. <laughs> Did you have any pets growing up? Oh yes, I always had pets. What'd you have? <laughs> a goat. <laughs> a goat and I had a, a dove. Oh, that dove went everywhere with me when I went outside. It always sat on my shoulder. Hmm. What, what were their names? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I don't know. I never did name them. No, it's just... I don't know. Somehow I didn't name anybody anything. But it always followed me everywhere I went. That dove, he just always sat on my shoulder everywhere I went. I went out in the orchard, sat in the trees, and we had a big orchard out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we had chickens for pets, an old hen, and, and, and that goat, that goat followed me everywhere I went. <laughs> Did you milk it or was it a he? No, no. <laughs> well, goat milk people do, so. Yeah, they use it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of water running under the bridge. And <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Did your husband help with the WPA or any of those programs? Oh, the yes. WPA? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad and my uncle did too. Then they had to work off the poll tax, they called it. And mm -hmm. with spring, they had to work off the poll tax. They always worked a half a mile grading up the road and fixing the road up. And, each one had a half a mile they had to take care of. P O L E? Or I guess, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you go to a movie theater very often? Do I? Did you go to the movies very often? Oh no. <laughs> no we never went to movies. <laughs> Didn't know there was such a thing. <laughs> no, we never went to no movies. <laughs> well, do you remember getting your first television set then? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> that was after you were married, I'm sure. Yes, oh yes. Uh, way after. <laughs> remember the first radio? Oh my, everybody thought that was something. I all had to listen to Amos and Andy. <laughs> My dad couldn't miss Amos and Andy. He had to listen to them. <laughs> yeah. And the baseball games? Yes. Did he mm -hmm. listen? They used the car radio. Get it to go in. <laughs> oh, used a car battery in order to get the radio yes. going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think's been the biggest change that you've seen? Oh, been a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Man, so many changes. What do you think's been the most, the biggest one or the most significant oh, one? The com computers and all that. My land, those computers. Yeah. And then that other, they got, what is it, iPod or whatever they call it. And they talk, um, that show all those pictures on it. and. Doing it. And cell phones? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's a big invention. <laughs> I just wonder what it'll be the next 20, 30 years. <laughs> We've come a long way, I know, in your lifetime. There's something coming up, some new stuff. And these young kids coming on, they're going to see a lot. <laughs> Well, you've seen a lot too, though. Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor happened? Yes, I was northeast of Dover. I was at home and my husband had helped somebody with baling hay. He came home and told me about it. Mm. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't have no radio on and I was out in the messing with the chickens and he came home and told me. <laughs> Well, Oklahoma's changed a lot during your oh, lifetime, yes. too. Oh, mm yes. -hmm. I mean, you were young when it was young, <laughs> right? So you would have seen it turn 25 years old and 50 mm -hmm. and yeah. mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, it's changed a lot. Did you follow politics? No, no. not much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, once you got out of the dairy business, what did you do? Just retire from? Well, when my husband got hard, we had to sell the cows and the farm out there, and moved here to Kingfisher. I went to work at the nursing home, mm -hmm. cooked there for 10 years as a cook. <laughs> we fed them pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> made homemade bread, made biscuits from scratch. Oh, made biscuits, yes. Yeah, everything was uh, homemade. I, like now, they stick everything in the microwave or in the oven and have it prepared. But boy, I, it was all homemade stuff. I made pies and cobblers and roasted and turkeys and chickens and good you know, fried good chickens. Everything was, it wasn't, oh, it, this is. The, Stuff now has got so much preservatives in it. It's now I don't think it's good for people. Mm. But there was nothing like that. And now we have we can't get a no. Back in your day, you had to cut up your own chicken. Oh yes, yeah. I remember Fourth of July. I was working at the nursing home cooking. I had to cut up thirteen chickens that morning, <laughs> and we made thirteen freezers of ice cream. I still look back and see how in the world we all, but well, we got it done, but we did. There was just two of us doing it. <laughs> well, now I wouldn't know how to cut up a chicken. We wouldn't. I, I, still I wouldn't. wouldn't. I still you wouldn't. Would. <laughs> would you have a pulley bone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you butcher hogs? Oh Did yes, that that's all we butchered. We never butchered the beef. Hmm. Those days you couldn't keep beef. When the um, coolers came up and refrigerators, then people started killing beef, but you couldn't keep beef. See, the pork, we fried it down and put it down cellar, put lard over it, put it in a big old crock, put lard over it, and it kept all summer down there. Hmm. Yeah, good. Oh, it was good. <laughs> Those little threshers, they loved that meat. <laughs> the threshing crews? Like yes. Mm -hmm. Would it be tough? Would oh, it be no. tough? Oh. Nice and tender. Hmm. Yeah, it was good. And you fried it first? Fried it first. Fried it a little in the oven. And it got all the water off of it. You didn't dare leave any water or anything like that on it that it boil. We got all that water dried out and then I put it down in the big old crock down cellar and put lard over it, keep melting lard and put over it and it kept all summer down there. <laughs> Would you layer it? Huh? Would you layer it? Yes, like layer layered it. it. Just mm -hmm. use a little bit mm -hmm. at a time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. To make your own sausage? People, oh yes, and sausage. People nowadays would think that wasn't sanitary, but it never killed nobody. <laughs> and that, that, may, that, that may be why you're still here. It was good meat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever think you'd live to be a hundred? No, I never did. Uh -uh. did. How old was your brother? How old did he get? He was about 64. So um, young. Mm -hmm. And your parents? Well, they were 
my mother was a 98, my dad was 89 when they passed so away. So pretty old. <laughs> How did you celebrate when you turned 100? What did you do? <laughs> my daughter had a party down there at the bank. Mm -hmm. Had a lot of people come by. <laughs> do you have anything left on your bucket list that you still want to do? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> What's a typical day like for you today? What, what, what time do you get up? What do you do during the day? What time do you go to bed? <laughs> what does a 105-year-old do? <laughs> we went to bed early because we were always so tired. We worked so hard all day. But I mean about now. Now. At 105. Well, I sit here and watch television and work crossword puzzles and and well, about 9.30 or 9, I get in bed, leave television on a while till I get sleepy and turn it off and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Usually about 9, 9.30. <laughs> now, now you said, I want to go back a little bit. I'm thinking your husband, you met your husband later when you were in your 30s, is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And did you ever go on a, did he ever, how did he court you? Did he, what kind of dates did he take you on or what did he do? What did you two do? <laughs> oh, he had a car. We went to the show once in a while here in Kingfisher. Yeah. Do you remember what show it was or what show you? No, no. I don't. Mm -hmm. Usually a Western. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we never went hardly anywhere. You just stayed there at the house. <laughs> and did you say your mother lived with you for some time? Did, did your mother live with you for some time? I lived with my mother for a while before she passed away. Mm -hmm. She needed help and I just moved in with her then. You know, she passed away and then I bought a house further up this way. And I still worked at the nursing home when she passed away, but I finally retired from there. Well, what did you do there? Cook. You cooked? No. <laughs> you cooked? Nothing much. I just stayed there at the house. And uh, at the nursing home you cooked? Yes, I cooked. cooked? That's right, that's right. Uh, yes, I cooked. I didn't mind it at all. We always had plenty to cook with. and. Mm -hmm. It was all prepared, and you, nothing prepared stuff like they have now. Everything just kind of stick it in the oven or in the microwave. Yep. Mm. When you were growing up, did you have to order things from the mail order catalog? Oh yes, Sears and Montgomery Ward. We ordered a lot of it. And going to Dover to pick it up, mm -hmm. or were they deliver? Yeah, pick it up. No, it came. And on the train, you had to go to the depot and pick it up. Once in a while, it was a small package. The mailman would bring it by. <laughs> well, what big things would you get through the mail? What, what, what would be bigger? What would be bigger things that you would order? Well, like a um, well, man sometimes ordered pants or an overcoat or something that way. Something kind of bungles them. That wasn't, that couldn't, they didn't deliver. Were your shoes, would your shoes come through the catalog? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Montgomery Ward? Yeah, both of them. We ordered from both of them. <laughs> well, do you remember getting the telephone at, at the farm? Yes. Mm -hmm. How many rings was yes. yours? Mm-hmm. Yep. Everybody had a certain ring. What was yours, do you remember? Two longs and a short. And if somebody died in the neighborhood, they had a certain ring. Everybody knew somebody died, and they'd mm -hmm. all run the phone and see what happened. <laughs> Not quite eavesdrop. Oh, yes, there's a lot of eavesdropping. <laughs> <laughs> You could talk to anybody, they'd be listening. <laughs> no secrets, huh? No. <laughs> yeah, 
and you hear those receivers go down when you ring. Everybody <laughs> they be listening. Yeah. Well, would you wear dresses or pants? Dresses. Mostly mm -hmm. dresses. <laughs> Even when you were when you were helping your dad on the farm, you'd wear a dress. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all did at that time. Nobody wore pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, when you got married, were you still wearing dresses, or did you could you wear pants dresses. by then? Still, <laughs> still, still dresses. I wore pants when I milked. Yeah. <laughs> Den denim. Yes. Were, were they denim? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Striped. <laughs> Striped. <laughs> <laughs> Did your dad ever grow cotton? We tried it one year. No, oh, my land, that rich ground out there, that stuff got that tall. No, my land, one year was enough. <laughs> we didn't play <laughs> cotton no more. That soil out there is rich and all that stuff grew. We had cotton everywhere. <laughs> Everybody said one year is enough. <laughs> You had to pick it though. You had to pick oh, something yes. later. Oh mm -hmm. yes. Drag you, that big old sack around. Did you get out of school in order to do that? Do you remember? If you got out of school? Mm, no, I don't think I did. I don't think you did. They, they always done most of it. <laughs> so the house you grew up in was two rooms? Is that what you said? Two bedroom, two rooms. It was a kitchen and a dining room, and a front room and two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. <laughs> Five room house. That's a pretty good size. Yeah, it was pretty good size. No air conditioning. Oh no. They're mm -hmm. open the windows. Hot. Oh, it was hot. Mm. <laughs> One year, one hundred and thirteen. No air conditioner, nothing. And no ice. Nope, nothing. So how'd you keep cool? The well was dry. Mm. Had to go to my uncle's on top of the hill. He had plenty of water. My brother always hauled water from there. Mm. I had to drink that warm water. No ice, no nothing. <laughs> what was your brother's name? Louis, Louis Cruz. Louis. L-O-U-I-E-K-R-U-S-E. <laughs> yes, yeah, somebody else interviewed me here a while back. They put me in the paper. That's a good place to be, I guess. <laughs> You're one of the happiest people I've met. So what, what, why is that? Gee, I don't know. Just like my mom, she was always just smiling. She never worried about it. She always said, oh, tomorrow will be better. Don't worry about it. Tomorrow will be better. <laughs> I don't know. I guess it's just nature. I don't know. Was your dad like that, or was he more serious? Yeah, he was kind of that way. Kind of that way, too. Did you go to dances when you were younger? No, no, I didn't. We didn't have any dances then. <laughs> not, not barn dances. The neighborhood once in a while had one, but I never did go. Box, box suppers. I think. Oh yeah, I had box suppers. Mm -hmm. And would you fix one? Yes. Mm -hmm. And waited for some some guy to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had them. <laughs> what would you usually fix in those box suppers? What would you take? Uh, we always had the, the schoolhouse, and uh, well, <laughs> sat in one of the desks there at the, at the, at the school. And what would you cook? What, what, what oh, would you put in it? Whatever we could <laughs> Mostly a piece of pie, usually, or sandwich, or fried chicken, or something that way, and well, fruit, whatever we wanted to fix. 
I'm thinking one of those big lemon meringue pies you're talking about earlier. <laughs> well, if you were 36 when you got married, these pie suppers didn't work too good, did they? No. <laughs> I wasn't in no hurry. <laughs> Just waiting for the right one to come along, huh? <laughs> Had a good life at home. Uh, busy, busy. Boy, we were busy all the time. <laughs> hadn't, hadn't, hadn't really planned to get married? Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to know, what, what's your secret to longevity? I really can't tell. I don't know. I didn't think I'd ever live this long. But I don't know. I really haven't done anything special. <laughs> Only I usually try to eat right. I'm not a doctor here in Dr. Arthur's. I go see every month and he always says, you amaze me. Whatever you're doing, you're doing right, he always says. He said, keep on eating what you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what typically in your life have you, you eaten? Do you oh, think that's... I, we mostly lived on fruit and vegetables. Had a big orchard, a lot of vegetables, and very little meat. Most of it was pork, pork and chicken. And we, I don't know, we didn't eat any much fried stuff. Everything was baked in the oven. And fruit and vegetables. I, some summers we just lived on vegetables. We didn't hardly have any meat at all. Bread and <laughs> vegetables and fruit. Hmm. For a while, my mother didn't even know anything about fried, anything fried. The northern people, you know, she's from the north. They don't fry nothing. At, they did at that time, but they probably do now. But at that time, they didn't know what it was to fry anything. They didn't. You, everything was baked in the oven. Yeah. Didn't need an iron skillet for that, did she? No. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, do you have a philosophy that you live by? No, not really. <laughs> or a motto? No. <laughs> Be happy, happy, happy. Just lived. <laughs> and and when you know when history is written, what do you want it to say about you? <laughs> do what? When history is written, what would you like it to say about you? Oh, geez. how do you want to be remembered? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what the... <laughs> but, uh, oh, but uh, I think the 20s were the best years there ever was. The 20s it was so nice. The war, you know, was over and everybody was so friendly and happy. And the times were good. Crops were good. It rained every... When it's supposed to be, it rained, seems like. You see, oh, we had good crops. People were so happy. Everybody got new cars. And, <laughs> and I remember the 20s were the happiest years, the nicest years at, that ever was. <laughs> And then 1929, that changed a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the despots came. Oh, that was awful. That was bad. Was there anything in particular about the 20s that you really enjoyed? Well, I enjoyed about everybody being so happy and going different places and getting new cars and radios and everything. And oh, I don't know, it's just different, I don't know, it's just, everything was like you say, was booming. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. well, sounds like you've had a pretty good life. I have, mm -hmm. yeah, I've had, went through a lot. <laughs> well, we thank you for sharing with us today. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. <laughs>